Hi friends, here in this video, we are going to see a problem on direct and bending stresses. For that, here is a question. It is given the cross section of a short column is of the shape of an arrow as shown in figure below. The diagram is given. It is the cross section of the column in the shape of an arrow. Find the position of the vertical force on the line of symmetry. On the line of symmetry, here we can see that this is the y-axis and the given cross section is symmetric about this y-axis. So we have to place the load on the y-axis of the section so that the stress at point A is zero. Here the point A is given. We have to place the load in such a way that there is no stress at point A. So the question is to find the distance of the load and that distance of the load is called as the eccentricity which we have to calculate here so for that i'll quickly write the data over here we have to find how much is the distance of the load to be kept and the stress at point a is called as zero and that is nothing but called as the minimum stress so i'll start the solution part and for that i'll divide this figure into two areas like here as we can see the arrow section is made up of a square which is 100 by 100 area 1 and then there is a triangle which would be area 2. So into the solution the first thing would be to get these values of area. Since area 1 is of the square. 100 by 100 that is 10 into 10 is to 3 mm square next therefore area second is of the right angle triangle which is half into base into height base of the triangle is 150 and even the height is 150 so therefore area 2 comes out to be the answer which I am getting it is 11.25 into 10 raised to 3 mm square. After getting area 1 and area 2, I will find the total area of the arrow section by adding both of them. So, therefore, By adding up the values, the total area comes out to be 21.25 into 10 raised to 3 mm square. Now, after getting area, I will explain what we have to find here. Basically, we need to know that at how much distance from this CG, the load should be placed so that there is the stress at point A is minimum which is 0 and this condition is called as the no tension condition. So I will explain it over here that for stress to be 0 at point A that is the stress at A is equal to the minimum stress that should be equal to 0 for that the minimum stress is given by the direct stress minus the bending stress is equal to 0. So we have to have the condition like direct stress should be equal to the bending stress and therefore the direct stress is load upon area whereas the bending stress is bending moment by Z M by Z which is the maximum bending moment upon the section modulus and this I have got from the flexural equation that since m upon i is equal to sigma b upon y so therefore m into y upon i is called as sigma b then this y would go into the denominator so m upon i upon y is equal to sigma b and this i upon y term is nothing but z 
called as a section modulus by definition so that is z next therefore p upon a is equal to the bending moment would be load into eccentricity so therefore as we see from both sides the load gets cancelled so eccentricity e would be z upon a therefore So this is the limiting condition that is we have to find the eccentricity by using this approach. So here I would be keeping it as equation first. Now the total area value we have the next thing would be to calculate the section modulus and that section modulus would be calculated about the CG and why about the CG because they have said that we have to find the location of the load which should be placed on the Y axis. So if the load is placed on the y axis, the distance would be measured from the CG. So it means we have to find the moment of inertia about the CG that is about this axis. I'll call it as axis G which is of the centroid axis GG. So now the next step would be that therefore section modulus Z is equal to i upon y and this i i would be calculating about the centroid or we can say the center of gravity and y is the distance from the cg up to the bottom since the reference i am taking it from the bottom by keeping the axis here this is the x axis and here is the y axis so this distance would become y so now ig that is the i about the centroid is given by i'll keep this as the second equation and therefore ig is i x x1 plus i x x2 since we are having two areas here i'll keep it as equation third so once we find ig i'm going to put the value in equation two to get section modulus putting the value of section modulus and area in equation one would give us the eccentricity so i x x1 is equal to i x x1 is the moment of inertia for the first figure that is for this square but about the cg now the horizontal axis of the square will pass at half of this height that is half of 100 so here we can see there is clearly a gap between the CG, the axis passing through the CG and the axis, horizontal axis for the first figure. So the distance between them is called as H1. And since there is a distance between the two axes, we have to use the parallel axis theorem. And in that theorem, in order to find IXX1, first I'll be calculating the moment of inertia of the square about its own axis. And that is given by the formula BD cube by 12 for the horizontal axis. So IXX1 is bd cube by 12 plus area 1 into h1 square that is by parallel axis theorem b and d for the square are both same they are 100 area 1 already we had calculated the value is 10 into 10 raised to 3 h1 square h1 is the height between the centroid of the complete arrow section or the centroidal axis for the complete arrow is arrow and then the x axis for the first figure so this is h1 and we can easily say that it is half of 100 so that is 50 square on calculating this i am getting the answer of ixx1 as it is 33.33 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 that is the unit of moment of inertia in a similar manner i would be calculating the moment of inertia for this second figure which is a triangle but about the cg so i can say that the horizontal axis for the triangle is located at a distance this is the base of the triangle so from the base the axis of the triangle is located at a distance of h by 3 so now we can even see that for the triangle as well its horizontal axis is given by axis 2 2 and the centroidal axis for the complete arrow section 
is passing over here so here also it means there is a difference between the two axes and that distance is called as h2 so again i would be applying the parallel axis theorem for section 2 as well i x x2 is equal to first the moment of inertia for the triangle about its own axis and the cg of the triangle i'll say that is g2 is located over here like for the square it was g1 so about this centroid of the triangle the moment of inertia is given by bh cube by 36 plus area for the triangle it is a2 into h2 square that is by parallel axis theorem again b and h are same for the triangle the base is 150 even the height is 150 area 2 came out to be 11.25 10 raised to 3 now h2 value is for the triangle its cg is located at h by 3 from the base and h is 150 so it is 150 by 3 which is 50 and on calculating this i am getting the answer of ixx2 which comes out to be 42.19 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 now once i know the values of ixx1 and ixx2 i am going to put them in equation number 3 to get the ig value Therefore, total IXX would be IXX1 came out to be 33.33 into 10 raised to 6, IXX2 42.19 into 10 raised to 6. Adding up both the values, that would give me IXX and it comes out to be 75.52 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 and that is nothing but ig that is the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis of the arrow section now once i know the value of i y as i have explained that is 100 mm the distance between the centroid and up to the reference that is the bottom axis or x axis we can see over here this distance is y so putting i and y value in equation number second will give me the section modulus z ig value 75.52 into 10 raised to 6 y value was 100 so therefore z comes out to be 755.18 into 10 raised to 3 and the unit of section modulus is mm cube since it is i upon y i is having the unit mm raised to 4 y is mm so mm gets cancelled from numerator and denominator and we get the unit as mm cube after getting the z value i can put z and a in equation 1 to get the answer of eccentricity so therefore in equation 1 so therefore e would be z is 755 0.18 into 10 raised to 3 and the total area was 21.25 into 10 raised to 3 so therefore the eccentricity answer comes out to be 35.54 mm that's the answer it means the load should be placed at an eccentricity of 35.54 mm from the centroid onto the y-axis now how that load is shown for that I'll draw a 3D diagram here of the given arrow section. So here I am drawing the 3D section for the given arrow section to explain the eccentricity of the load.
here was the point A given this is the y axis and here was the centroid located at point G now we have to place the load on this y axis so that the stress at A is minimum or zero as I had explained over here now the load can be placed on this y axis either towards A or away from A but if we place it towards A in that case A would be having compressive stress and that is a positive stress having maximum value so we don't want the maximum stress at A because in the question it is mentioned that the stress at A should be equal to zero it means the load should be away from A then only the stress at A would be zero so we have to place it away from A and the value is 35.54 mm away from the eccentricity away from the centroid we can say so this eccentricity E is equal to 35.54 mm and the load is placed over this location that is called as the load P so this is the meaning of the problem that we have to place the load at 35.54 mm away from the CG onto the y axis and that will result as the stress at point A is equal to 0 so that was the problem at the end if you will find my videos helpful you can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends thanks for watching